got one. I'm on. Yeah. There we go. That's a decent fish. And what you're left with is a beautiful, beautiful fillet. A lot of people have been asking me how I clean my fish, my pan fish, the crappies and the sunfish that I catch, and how I cook them up into those beautiful golden crispies that I make. So in this video, I'm gonna go over a little bit of catching fish, but more how to clean them with my bone handled silver stag fillet knife, kind of the old fashioned way, and how to make them into those golden crispies campsite. You ready? Let's go fishing. Got one, I'm on. Yeah, there we go, that's a decent fish. Got caught up in something it feels like, but he's fighting hard. Oh yeah, that's a nice sunfish. Nice bluegill, beautiful fish. Or they're really biting the worms tonight. Look at that pretty fish. Another one that's got the uh, tail kind of bit up on it, but just bigger than my hand. Pretty bluegill, the nice orange bottom and the pink and going in the tank. So the nice thing is, is that here at uh, the campground where I have uh, my boat and everything here on this nice lake, they have a fish cleaning shack with a grinder and everything that you need. And I brought, of course, my family knife. This is a silver stag knife and you can see the, the carbon blade stays nice and sharp and I do things kind of the old school way so I'm going to show you how to clean these the old school way no electric knife all right so we're going to do the crappie what what I do is I go in behind the fin right here and behind the gills and then I go at an angle and kind of get as much of this meat as possible so what I'm going to do is go right in at a nice angle come right down through and then as I've gotten it down to there what i want to do is take the tip of the knife and i want to slide it right in along the backbone just as close as i can to the backbone and just barely get that started that's the way that i do it and i kind of go down along here and i'm holding it nice and flat and when i get past the ribs i want to poke out that other side and then just come right out down through the tail okay so then i'll grab this meat and i'll peel it back and as i peel i'm going to go ahead and go down along the bones and I'm going to get everything peeled up nicely up on the ribs. And then I actually take my knife and I turn it the other way. And I slide it right in under that flap of meat. And I go right up along the belly as well. Okay. And I'm going to take this, this part of my knife, I guess the thicker part of my knife. And I'm going to come down along here. And I'm just going to run it right down along the ribs just like that. And that pulls it off nicely. Hold it. Go down along there. Go ahead and peel that all the way off the skin and what you're left with is a beautiful filet from your crappie. Very nice. Of course, it's a little bloody at this point. I'm gonna get it washed off and soak it in water, but that's how you're gonna get, in my opinion, the most meat off that fish. And let's take a look at the other side. Of course, I started with the fish facing the left side. Now I'm gonna go to the fish facing the right side with its belly towards me. I'm gonna go this way this time. So I'm going to start this cut from this direction, from the top instead of the bottom. And I'm going to make the cut down at an angle, just like I did in the first one. Go down along the backbone, just with the tip of the knife going in through the meat. And as soon as I pass the ribs, I'm going to slide out and then just go along there and come right out the tail. And I like to just go ahead and trace that back up, make sure I get all the meat off of there that I can. Okay. Then you want to go up the ribs a little bit, up the ribs on this side a little bit. And again, you're going to take that knife and you're going to slide right along that belly meat there just to get as much as you can. I start up here and I kind of peel it back. 
then I just peel along these ribs. And you want to take your time. If you've never done this before, you really want to take your time with that part because you're kind of cutting while you're peeling and you're cutting along those ribs. And you want to make sure that you don't take any of the ribs and you also want to make sure that you're being careful of your hand. So, you want to hold this part. Go ahead and go down along the skin and just press really firm. And again, that's going to get you a nice, beautiful fillet. And that's how you do a crappie. So I wasn't using the glove at first with the crappie and uh, that's, that's okay. Crappies have some sharp gills. And one of the things I want to show you with the crappie is look at how transparent that is after I'm done with it. But now when I switch to the, the bluegill or the sunfish, I'm definitely going to use this glove. And not only does this protect me from my knife, of course, but also these have extremely sharp gills very very sharp and i've cut my hands many times on them so what you're going to do with the uh, bluegill sunfish and this is a tougher fish it's got a more dense scale pattern you're going to just go in just behind the gill just like i did with the other fish with the other with the crappie and you want to go down to the backbone just like that you again insert the knife and this is going to be a common theme with all of these fish just insert the knife just inside of there go down along the ribs and as soon as you know you pass the ribs Go ahead and come off the tail. Grab the meat, peel it along the bones and up the rib bones. And you want to turn your knife, go down along that belly, just like that. You want to peel it off the ribs, just like with the crappie. And, and some of that is just pressure, peeling that off. It's not even the knife. You kind of start it with the knife and you and you keep peeling with the pressure of your hand. And you just go through there, get that off, and you end up with a nice, beautiful fillet. And that's a bluegill, that's not even a crappie. A lot of people's crappie fillets look like that. Again, go to the other side. Again, it'd be facing your right if its belly was towards you. You wanna go down through it. Down along the backbone. Come out the bottom. I always peel back up through here just to make sure I get the most meat that I can. Start peeling along there. And I'm gonna peel up just a little bit here to start it over those ribs. And again, I'm gonna go down along the bottom. Start it there. Get out of here. And there we go, another nice fillet. Okay, that's the sunfish. We're gonna go over how I do my campsite cooking of my panfish that I catch. As you see, I catch quite a few panfish and sometimes I do keep the fish and uh, you've seen in my other videos and I'll link in the description some of my videos of how I catch the panfish, not the canned fish, but the panfish. Uh, but what I do is I take this old wok that I have and I use just regular vegetable oil and I use my three, well, I guess three function grill. It has a griddle and it has a grill that t comes off the top of it and then a burner that I use this right on top of. So let's go ahead and let's put some uh, oil in the pan. Let's get these golden crispies frying. What do you say? Okay, so I usually soak my fish in water. Because we're at the camper, I soaked them in water in a baggie. Uh, but I like the way that when you soak them in water, it kind of puffs the fish meat up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my strainer. And this is the way that I do it. I pour my fish into the strainer. And then I go ahead and get the water going. And I go ahead and rinse them off a good final time and just and that kind of helps me check for any potential bones as well. Just make absolute certain. 
I take a really good care of my fillets and people love eating my fish because of it. All right, so what we're gonna do with our pan fish is we've taken some shore lunch, just shore lunch, original recipe, and we put it in a gallon size baggie. So I wanna take the pan fish after I've strained it down and left it actually nice and wet. And I wanna just go ahead and throw it right in there. I don't do eggs, I don't do anything else. I just put it right in there, okay? Probably at least you can put five to eight pieces in there or you can put more. Me, I don't have any issue with just throwing it all in there, but I do it individually to kind of keep it separated as much as possible. Get it in the baggie, zip it up nicely, and then go ahead and just shake it up. Just like the old shake and bake back in the day. Probably some of you do remember that commercial. People would put uh, different meats in the bag and shake it up. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm just making sure to get all the surfaces covered. Once I have that done, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the oil for the Golden Krispies. Stay tuned. Getting close on these. Oh, looking nice. Some of them are probably about done with that one. So this is the result of our pan fish fry. This is awesome, let me tell you something. This is the way that I love, I most prefer to do my fish. Now I can do it beer batter fried, I can do it like this. You can get creative and you can do like an egg wash and then flour and then egg wash and then cracker and it kind of makes it like a chicken breast or something a little bit more substantial. But I just love good old fashioned shore lunch. Just making sure you have the fish wet, rolling it in the batter and frying it up nicely. Mm. <laughs> that crappie is good. Mm. Mm. It's so hot, I just took it right out of there. Woo. And you don't need anything with that. You don't need any tartar sauce, you don't need anything. But you can do it however you want to. I'm gonna take this to my family. We're gonna enjoy this tonight. Fish Brain Shane, out.